Hello everyone, my name is Qian Tian Han and I'm a PhD student in ITC with Bob and Yi Jian. And today I will talk about our product, one kilometer soil moisture product. We used, we used the physics-informed machine learning to do this research firstly because we can see with the resolution problem requirement uh, if we want to do the agriculture production or the carbon cycle application, we need the higher resolution product, but the one kilometer soil moisture is still missing. And also for the method part, from the right figure, we can see in different way of doing this um, data set, machine learning shows a, a promising performance. So we selected a random forest to do this research. And also we did a Intercomparison um, research about different machine learning algorithms, and uh, in the uh, finally we chose random forest to do this one. And uh, we got the in situ measurement uh, so most from uh, international so moisture network. This is the distribution of them. And for the uh, we used uh, uh, non land surface features to do this. Uh, this and uh, they are all available on Google Earth Engine. Uh, uh, some of them, like water table depths, are not, uh, is not available on Google Earth Engine, but we downloaded it and then uploaded it to Google Earth Engine. Uh, for this research, our idea is about the physics informed, so that is uh, from this figure, we can see the soil moisture is related to precipitation evaporation and also runoff and groundwater these uh, variables. Uh, I can uh, briefly introduce a bit of our framework. Firstly, we uh, extract the uh, land surface features from Google Earth Engine to the uh, in situ soil moisture stations to get the training data and the testing data. And then we use this data train the model on Google Earth Engine and then we can do the one kilometer soil moisture prediction in Google Earth Engine. And then, and then we compared the uh, one kilometer soil moisture product with ESA CCI and the SMAP. And this is our testing performance. You can see the RMRC and the R um, correlation is uh, um, quite uh, satisfactory. And for, from the feature importance, um, importance we can see APEI, or oh, I forgot to mention, it's uh, antecedent uh, precipitation and evaporation index that is uh, can, uh, can reflect the historical um, precipitation and evaporation if influence on the current day of the soil moisture. This is our um, result in 2020. It's the average of the whole year. Uh, this uh, the second one is ESA CCI and the third one is MAP, and we did the uh, lat latitude uh, profiles uh, of them because of we can see ESA CCI is missing some data in the tropical area. So in the red figure, we can see the legend there. We ma masked the our product and, and the map to do the comparison. We can compare with the uh, 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 yeah with the uh, mask mask. That means they are comparable. Uh, in general, they are uh, consistent with each other, but in the tropical area, our product is a bit low. That, that could be the reason there are no um, enough stations in the tropical area. And this is our validation in the time series uh, among three different products. The um, left and the um, up one is the Pearson correlation and the bottom one is RMRC and unbiased uh, RMRC and the number of the, of the um, validation. We can see uh, uh, they, are, uh, they all perform similar in the person correlation, but in the unbiased RMRC and RMRC, our product, um, product performs a bit better than them. And also SMAP is only uh, available from tw 2015 until 2020, so they don't have uh, they have less product in the validation. And uh, here I want to show some examples in uh, specific stations. Uh, 
the blue, no, the black line is our uh, is the in situ soil moisture, and the blue line is our product. The orange is the uh, SMAP, and the green one is ISCCI. And the second one uh, is Dry Lake. It's in the U.S. and the, um, the special distribution is uh, from left until right is ISCCI SMAP, and uh, our one kilometer um, product. We can see from the time series our product. Mm, is more consistent on the also from the spatial uh, details it shows more details and for this one it's uh, for stations in Netherlands because uh, for our product we did uh, we updated uh, for um, seven, or, seven or nine nine versions so the blue line is our previous version and the um, Yellow lines, our current version, it uh, performs be performs better than the previous one, and it also performs better than ISCC and SMAP, because Netherlands is a bit uh, different. It has the higher soil moisture in RAM and uh, twenty stations. And this is uh, some stations in Tibetan Plateau. The first one, um, uh, first and the second one, oh, first one. These three products both underestimate the in situ soil moisture because in this station the in situ soil moisture is quite high but still our product performs a bit better. And in the second station source, uh, our product and the SRCCI performs similar but it's a bit lower uh, and the SMAP can get the... the SMAP can get the... No, this map doesn't have the um, data in when the in situ so most of the data is existing, and the third one, uh, the third one, our so most product is a bit uh, underestimated because we can see from the second one, it's API uh, from the amount we can see from the right uh, 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 yx, it's a bit lower because the API is. Uh, has a positive correlation with the uh, soil moisture, so that's why it has a bit underestimate. So our random forest uh, was trained based on the in situ soil moisture and some other uh, land surface features, and the testing result shows that the MRC is 0 0.05 cubic centimeter per cubic centimeter and the cor um, correlation coefficient is 0 0.88 and the evaluation results of the random forest with other um, products also show a uh, satisfactory performance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bianca. So, um, we can take one question from the audience, if you have any. Otherwise, I can ask a very quick question. So you said you use Google Earth Engine. That means your code is in, in JavaScript or uh, in, yes, in Python in JavaScript? JavaScript. Yeah. How long does it take for you to do the computation on Google Earth Engine, approximately? Uh, uh, because if we run globally, it's not possible. So we run by continent. Oh. And in total, it's about two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you very much. Thank you.